वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला माई नेम इज आशा कुठारी चौधरी एंड आई एम अ प्रोफेसर ऑफ इंग्लिश एट गुवाहाटी यूनिवर्सिटी वी आर डूइंग अ कोर्स ऑन इंडियन राइटिंग इन इंग्लिश एंड द मॉड्यूल वी आर लुकिंग एट इज ऑन फिक्शन दैट ऑफ अरुंधुति रॉय द बुक कॉल्ड गॉड ऑफ स्मॉल थिंग्स The God of Small Things is a book that has made waves for all the right reasons for a long time and its author has become one of the most well-known activist writers in our times. Let us take a quick look at uh, her biographical uh, notes. We have her birth in 1961 at Shillong in Meghalaya she completed her schooling from Tamil Nadu and went later to Delhi to study architecture in the school of planning and architecture her work the god of small things received as we all know the man booker prize for fiction in 1997 arunthuti roy's other works include a television serial called the banyan tree and a documentary called dam slash age which is a film with arunthuti roy in 2002 we all know that this is about the narmada bachao andolan and we know that she has had a, a very very active um collusion with that particular environmental group She also wrote a book named We Are One, a celebration of the tribal peoples published in 2009. Coming to the book in focus, The God of Small Things, we begin to see what it is about in terms of its focus on the family living in Ayamanam, a town in the state of Kerala during post-independence times. The God of Small Things revolves around the story of Ammu who bereft of any happiness and hope in life comes to Ayamanam with her twins Rahel and Esther. Her relationship with Velutha an untouchable brings a lot of suffering to her life. She eventually leaves Ayamanam. The God of Small Things secured the international fame that it was mount for and was listed as one of the new york times notable books of the year in 1997 it received rave reviews from major publications such as the new york times the los angeles times and the toronto star this book actually deals with the life of a family living in ayamanam as we have already said before the central character in the novel amu is a disillusioned woman with her marriage and is in a situation where she has divorced her husband and comes to ayamanam to live with the family and falls in love with an untouchable man named velutha and this is the episode that will wreak havoc in her life Rahel and Esta are the twin children of Amu and they live in Ayamanam with their grandmother Mamachi great aunt baby Kochamma and uncle Chako Their father lives in Kolkata whom Amu divorced while they were 2 years old The family now awaits the arrival of Chako's ex-wife and daughter Margaret and Sophie Mol respectively who are staying in London Jo Margaret's second husband died in an accident and therefore Chako invites them to Ayamanam for the Christmas so that the loss might be a little heat With Sophie's arrival the twins receive little attention and most of the times we see that they spend their time by the side of a river mulinjering here and there One day they find an old boat They manage to repair the boat with the help of Velutha and they often visit a house which is abandoned 
on the other side of the river. Peluta is an untouchable and old acquaintance of Amu and Chako. He has been helped by the family who sends him to school and later employs him in their pickle factory as a mechanic and as a carpenter. During her stay with the family, Amu gets attracted to Velutha. One day, they decided to meet by the side of the river and eventually they sleep with each other. Realizing that they had done something socially unacceptable, that of an untouchable having a sexual relationship with a superior caste, both decide to keep their relationship a secret. Unfortunately, the secret is revealed one day when Velvelutha's father observes their interactions. He immediately reports it to Mamachi and baby Kochamma. And following this, Amu is locked up in a room. Amu is utterly frustrated. She asks the twins to leave her and go away so that without them, she would be totally free to act on her own will. Therefore, the twins decide to leave their house and stay at the house on the other side of the river. Sophie hears their plan and demands to be taken along with them. While crossing the river, their boat capsizes. Rahel and Esther swim to the other end, but Sufi is carried away by the current. The twins search for her quite a long time, but to no avail. They reach the abandoned house and fall asleep on the veranda. Not knowing that their affair has been discovered, Veluta visits Amu's house earlier that night. Mamachi insults him when he arrives and soon he leaves the place. In the morning, the family discovers that the children are missing. Meanwhile, Sophie's death is reported. Baby Kochamma goes to the police station and wrongly blames Veluta for all that has happened. She accuses him of attempting to rape Amu and also for kidnapping of the children. The police arrive and arrest Veluta and beat him so inhumanly that he almost dies. Baby Kochamma forces the children to confirm the false statement she made at the police station. Veluta dies the next day in the prison. Amu and her children are held responsible by Chako for Sophie's death. Their stay in the house turns to be unpleasant and now they decide to leave. Esther is sent to his father who lives in Kolkata. He attends school and college there. Amu lives Ayamanam to look for a job while Rahel stays there. Amu finds no work and she dies of ill health in a lodge with no one by her side. Rahel marries an American and goes to America with him, but the two get divorced eventually. 23 years later, Esther is returned to IMNM by his father, who is emigrating to Australia. Rahel also returns to the family's house as she longs to see Esther. The twins are reunited and both of them sleep together that night. Let us look at the characterization that Arundhati Rai uh, has structured in her novel, The God of Small Things. Let us look at Amu's character, the central character of, the, of this novel. One would make Amu's character out to be one of the most tragic ones in the novel, a character that is bereft of any happiness or hope in life. She comes to Ayamanam with her twins. But there is a certain kind of growth as her affair with Velutha will suggest. Rahil is the female twin of Amu and Esther is the male uh, twin. Mamachi is the grandmother 
the wife of the late, late Papachi. And baby Kochamma is the sister of Papachi whom Ammo's twins fear the most. Vilutha is an untouchable of the lowest kind, a paravan. Jaco, Amu's brother, who was a Rhodes Scholar at Oxford, and Papachi is Amu's father, who is absent from the main events of the story. He is a dominating husband, as we understand. Some of the other minor characters in the novel are Margaret, who is the ex-wife of Chaco, Sophie Moll, who is the daughter of Chaco, Babo, who is the father of Esther and Rahel, Velia Papin, who is the father of Velutha, Kuttapen, who is the brother of Velutha, and Father Mulligan, who is a priest in Ayamenem. Comrade Pillay is the leader of the Communist Party in Ayamenem, and Jo Margaret Kochamma's second husband and stepfather of Sophie. Thomas Matthew is the inspector at Ayamenem's police station, and Orange Drink Lemon Drink Man is the man who molests Esther at the cinema. So what are, having understood what the, the storyline, broad storyline of this novel, let us now try to trace some of the themes and central issues that the novel throws up. In the first place, the novel seems to deal with forces of social order, with custom and law, and the subversion of these. The private lives are regulated by social, political and religious order of the day. However, these structures have a profound impact upon the lives of the individuals inside and outside their homes and their behavior towards other people and their ways of viewing the world and so on. You have an underlying current of ideologies in this novel and communism distinction among castes, customs and laws that determine the lives of almost every character in the novel can be read through certain filters such as these. The theme of untouchability is again dominant in the novel. Velutha, the untouchable, is marginalized and subordinated. Arundhati Roy's critique of the social and political scenario of contemporary times and the most important issue that comes forth is that of untouchability. Untouchability is also something that in so many ways is also explorative of the idea of insularity, of othering, of difference and so on. Of course, untouchability has its sharply Indian focus as well. Roy explores the woman question as well in this novel, inescapably so. The novelist gives the women a voice of a certain kind and an agency so that they, their struggle for their rights uh, and to, their right to possess a certain sense of identity is clearly delineated. Some women characters are seen as complacent, some are resistant and even transgressive uh, of the dominant order of the times. For example, if we consider the case of Amu, her affair with an untouchable would not be regarded as a sexual transgression. It is also an act of resistance that sought to bring about some change in the prevailing structures of the days. Let us now consider the narrative structure that shapes the novel. And there are some two deliberate uh, lines that help in holding together this particular novelistic structure that Roy employs. There are two storylines that move between two points in time, 1969 and 1993. 
Roy makes use of flashbacks and flash forwards to narrate the story in a non-chronological manner. In the novel, time has been used both as a structuring principle as well as an important theme in the novel. The fragmented narrative time of the novel suggests the effects of trauma of the past on the present lives of the characters and it indelibly has left an, uh, an impression that cannot be gotten rid of. Another aspect of the narrative style is the use of intertextuality in The God of Small Things. By intertextuality, we mean you can hear stories of other novels, other narratives, even as you engage with the text of The God of Small Things. For example, there are many intertextual references that we may find that will link this novel to Conrad's Heart of Darkness, Dickens's Tale of Two Cities, or Shakespeare's The Tempest, which shows that literary and cultural texts have this strange ability to move across cultures. It also suggests that the British and American influences on India results in a globalized and cultural hybridity that is unique to Indian writing. If we look at the gender questions in The God of Small Things, we will notice that Arundhati Roy has presented women with a range of possibilities regarding their outlook on life and society. Some are seen as complacent or resistant, uh, or even seen as transgressing the dominant order of the times. Roy, however, does not idealize or criticize any of them. Rather, she portrays them as having complex traits. She has shown how each of them has been dominated in some way or the other by the system of oppression, a system which obviously comes with patriarchy. But Roy gives them voice and she gives them agency. The, those who struggle for their right to possess a sense of identity are given these two things of agency and voice. Let us examine some of the characters of the novel to make this point a little clearer. Mamachi is um, first seen as a submissive and docile woman who is quite traditional in her views of life, but she silently bears the torture of her husband who, used to, who is used to beating her up regularly and she never opposes him. But she finds a way out all by herself. She transcends the limits imposed upon her by society and emerges out to be an independent woman when she starts her business of pickle making in her kitchen without Papachi's consent. This act is transgressive and gives agency through which Mamachi tries to carry out her idea without her husband's or the society's opinions. Mamachi's emancipation is, however, a little different from others. She adopts a more indirect and subtle way of doing things which actually work for her. Baby Kochama is more indirect in her mode of operating things. Her life is less constrained as she is not under any marital commitment. She does not have a man to submit to. But all her life, she remains heartbroken because uh, of the unreciprocated love of Father Mulligan. The values and morals of society may influence her life, but she remains unrestricted in her will to act as she wants. She exercises her agency at all times to influence the lives of others. This is seen uh, in her manipulative nature, which she uses to control other people in her family and even outside it. For instance, she knowingly misrepresents Veluta and Amu's relationship to save the honor of the family in the eyes of Inspector Thomas Matthews. She takes recourse to lying to serve her own ends many times in the novel. Amu can be regarded as a marginalized figure. She's a divorced woman who is left with two children to suffer. 
utterly helpless she comes to her father's house where she is badly treated uh, her twins are also treated badly during her youth amu is not a conformist but she quickly accepts her for the first proposal that is made to her marries a person outside of their religion and she takes her own decisions and later when things go wrong her marriage uh, in her marriage she divorces him as well but now she is disinherited from the family property by chako her brother who says that she has no legal right to inherit the factory or the house even her children are marginalized to a great extent and according to baby kochamma they are half hindus whom no self respecting syrian christian would even marry arundhati roy seems to suggest that amu acts according to her own essence unaffected by society her experience as a child and an, as an adult is responsible in shaping and influencing her life she was unfamiliar with the ways of patriarchal rules and the worst outcome of female submission towards it uh, which makes her reject and resist it she is bold enough to go to the police station to complain against the detention of belutha and untouchable which is otherwise against the values of her community which is in some sense transgressive her affair with an untouchable again should not be considered just as a social trans uh, or a sexual transgression but also an act of defiance of resistance that sought to bring about some kind of change in the prevailing structure of the time arundhati roy's work the god of small things in so many ways has become a kind of benchmark in current fictional history of indian writing in english uh, having won the booker prize in 1997 uh we find that uh the novel explores in its unique way uh, all the underlying historical uh, socio cultural and political uh, issue based ideas through the narrative uh, lines that she affects in terms of two uh timelines and the issues that she is looking at consistently uh, gives us the impression that uh that we will have uh, an author who is going to turn soon into an activist it is already there in this novelistic form for instance look at the issues that she is politically handling and how does she handle it in terms of the politics that underlie uh, these issues uh, for example take the question of caste distinctions it is quite central to this story the fact that velutha is an untouchable that he, she uh, the amu and velutha are not able to have uh, uh, their love consummated in a in a sense uh, deeply questions the ingrained um uh caste distinctions that affect the lives of all these people and finally lead to their annihilation so uh in other senses you have a uh, a certain kind of subversion that is also uh, perhaps one of the strands that holds the novel together what again are the double standards that are seen in terms of communism and you have also this extreme left wing uh kind of uh, ideological stance that becomes again a kind of a hallmark in uh the works that will follow by arundhati roy and you have them actually a part of this novel as well the other perhaps one of the more interesting things that you could uh, also focus upon is how the title suggests the idea of small things what does small things mean how can you contrast them with big things how are they related to each other can we read this novel in terms of subalternity the small and the big 
the larger picture and how the small things make a difference or are finally just submerged? How does gender work in this state of affairs? These are specific kinds of questions that we can take up while we are reading uh, Arundhati Roy's God of Small Things. Thank you.